Uh, this is going to be a fairly quick video on uh, how to anneal uh, metal. This is a kingpin from a truck. Um, it's case hardened. It's hard overall. Uh, there's very little videos about how to do this. Uh, this is going to be a, for the purpose of machining in a lathe. Um, we're going to be using my um, uh, wood stove. I actually had it sitting on top of the wood stove for a little while. That's why I'm holding it with a glove because it was freezing cold. It's about minus 12 right now. Um, so the first thing you want to do is get a nice ember pile going. Uh, we've got a good pile of embers going right now. Um, let me take you over here. All right, as you can see, it's down to a fairly roar, um, small roar. Um, I apologize if this isn't in focus, it's a manual focus camera. Um, so you want a, a good, good amount of embers in here. This is a fairly good bed. Um, I mostly like to do most of my burning in the front of the stove. The back I pile up with ash. So there's probably about half a foot of ash in the back. I pile in the sides in the back. Uh, it's not for laziness. You want to cover this with ash once you're done. So you take that and you bury it in the middle. You want to take the ash and just kind of cover it nicely with ash and that will keep it nice and hot. And just uh, take your wood, throw it in on top. This is all just pieces of clean pallet. Really pile it on there. Since it's minus 12, minus 15 with wind chill, um, we're going to be keep keeping this going really hot, which is good. Once you have a good uh, pile of wood going, I like to take some sawdust, toss it on over top. Since we have an unlimited supply of sawdust, that really gets it started and going well. And uh, I'm going to bring you back in about an hour or two um, once that's good and going. This is about four hours in. We've got a raging inferno uh, in here. It's quite a bit of uh, heat in there. Uh, I'm not going to open it right now because unfortunately my hands get burnt. Um, but we've gone through about that much wood. So I don't know about, about a skid maybe. <clears throat> uh, maybe two skid. Skid and a half maybe. Uh, I got the kingpin um, to a cherry red. So it's like a dull red maybe. Uh, not a cherry red, but like a dull red. So you do that to try and get the hardness um, to equalize through the whole thing. So the whole thing is very, very hot. Um, I don't know if I'm going to film it or not, but what we have to do now is um, once the fire completely dies down, um, when we're leaving, uh, we're going to take all of the ash and take all the embers, put it all in the middle in a big pile, and then take all of the ash, and then I've got an ash bucket here of just a whole bunch of ash from last time. And what we're going to do is just kind of pile it all on, on top and leave it for about two days roughly to let, let it just cool down nice and slow. <clears throat> if I come back here tomorrow, um, the kingpin is still going to be so hot you won't be able to touch it. Um, it's not going to be like red or anything, but it'll be too hot to handle basically. So it's best to leave it for about two days. Um, this is a very uninsulated garage and heat es escapes very quickly. Um, but the ash pile keeps all the heat in. Um, there's fire bricks underneath, so the fire bricks will reflect the heat back up into the ash pile. Um, and it just cools down. The, the slower you can cool it down, the better it will be. Um, basically, the, the metal relaxes and all of the, um, the crystalline structure of the metal um, just kind of evens out throughout the entire thing. Um, this is basically annealing. That's the whole point of annealing is you want to equalize the metal for it to be like in a naturally unhardened state. Um, if you work your metal way too hard, um, it'll harden and then you have to anneal it again and then you can go ahead and do it again. So, you know, that's why you want to use a lot of cooling fluid. You don't want to harden the metal. So, if I do film it, I'll see in a bit when this is all down. I'll show you how the thing's going red hot. I don't want to open that, that's really hot. This part isn't going to be terribly exciting, but uh, this is basically us scooping all of the ash over top of the um, embers. Uh, as you can see, the embers are pretty hot. 
the kingpin itself right now has been in there for actually about six or seven hours. We ended up being in the shop a lot longer than we expected. Um, just because, you know, we're busy doing other stuff. Um, as you can see, you kind of want to get the ash all over the place. Get it all over your floor, get it burning whatever you can <laughs> or not. Um, you want to pick up all the ash that you left in the back of the wood stove. And just kind of pile it on over top. Um, the kingpin's just in the middle, in the middle of all of this stuff. Um, as you can see in here, there's a whole ton of nails. Since all we do is burn pallets, there's we don't bother removing any of the nails. That's just stupid. There's no reason to do that. We just throw it all in there and set it on fire. You know, it, it burns just as well with or without the nails. So there's no sense in bothering. I'm gonna say it probably gives it a little bit of insulating yeah. factor too. Um, one of these days I like to just collect all of them and just pound them into a nice knife. Just see what you get out of it. Um, but yeah, you, know, you gotta make sure you close the vents off so uh, it insulates it and seals it off real good. Um, here we're just scooping up all the crap that's all on the floor. Um, there's a, a fireproof piece of ply underneath um, so nothing would happen. But you never know. Um, yeah. So then we end up leaving it for several days. Okay, so here we are several days later. It's about two days later. I haven't been in the shop for a little bit. Um, and the fire is completely down. Uh, we piled all of the embers together into one area and then all the ash together in one area. Uh, right now, let me show you how cold it is inside the shop here. It's about ooh, minus 10. As most of the things in here are about minus 10 or so. Um, sometimes it takes the oven here like three days to cool down, two days to cool down mm -hmm. with how cold it is now. Shit. My bad. Uh, the ash pile is about minus two Celsius or so, give or take a little bit. But I almost guarantee once we move it, some of this aside, there's probably still going to be an ember or two that are burnt that are still going. So what I like to do is just pile the ash to the sides and to the back. Oh, I'm going to focus it a bit. There we go. So, right to the back. So there's our kingpin. And if this is not about 10 degrees or less, or more rather, I will not pull it out. I'll just cover it back up and I'll leave it back in here. <clears throat> so we're getting minus one, zero, roughly. Okay, so that's perfect. What I like to do with this now is take this and throw it into a vat of just plain old vinegar. So submerge it right in the vinegar. Right there we got a a truck camshaft that we already treated. There's another truck camshaft over there. What that does is that gets all the scale off of it. So once the scale's off of it, you just kind of wipe it dry with a towel, maybe brake clean it. Um, then I like to treat it with uh, like a corrosion inhibitor. Uh, you can use a crown or you can pretty much use whatever you like. We personally like this stuff right here. It's called Terminator. So get this from work it's about 10 bucks for a can it's it's a corrosion inhibitor uh, kind of hard to focus all at the same time so it's a corrosion inhibitor you can use it on pretty much whatever you like pretty awesome stuff and then you can use it in the lathe ah fuck should have probably shown you that it was soft hang on i'm gonna go get it okay so uh here it is now i pulled it back out of the uh um, the bath of um, vinegar. Um, obviously the scale is not off of it right now. It's still got the kind of really hard grimy bits from uh, from being in the oven. Um, if you take this to your lathe now, um, like this here will just chew up your bits. So it's best to kind of clean that off. So if you've got a rusty surface or just anything that's really rusty, best thing is just soak it in, um, in vinegar um, overnight. Uh, or a couple days. I usually leave it for about a week. That etches the surface and it cleans all of the scale, all of the rust, right off of the part and keeps it uh, down to bare metal. Uh, so I'm just going to get my file. 
file handle and I've made another video and I just pull this with my elbow as you can see it just chews it right up so that is nice and soft now big chew marks taken out of it so that'll machine up just fine um, wondering what that pulley is that's uh, another video that's uh, these two were the same earlier uh, we're making a, a vent but anyway that's a different video um, if you do want to see that video that'll be here once it's done um, yeah I know that's how you uh, he treats the metal, anneal it, make it soft. Fucking hell. There we go. I'd say heat treat the metal, make it soft, make it workable. Um, again, this is a kingpin for a truck. These are two keyways. This is, um, I don't think it's through hardened, but it's for sure case hardened. So it's very, very, very hard on the outside. This is basically what, this, I think there are 20,000 pound axles on the front on the truck. This is what two and a half inches around, hopefully, two inches. It's huge, quite strong, quite robust. And now it's a piece of stock metal. This is just something they threw out at work. And uh, what's garbage to one is uh, gold to the other. Thanks, keep watching.